Hello everyone, this is another quick and dirty follow-up uh, of uh, what's going on, um, so to speak, an update about uh, Unix development. And uh, as you can see, I have a new board. Uh, this is branded slightly differently. It's uh, called Amicube. This is the first time I'm uh, putting this on the internet uh, publicly. I did talk about this board on World of Commodore 2023, but uh, for some reason the video is not out yet, so I don't know if uh, they will release this file, this video file or not, uh, previously recorded, but um, one way or another I can talk about it right now. Uh, and then just by comparison I have a meme here, or, although uh, this is version 197 ATX, uh, right now I'm waiting for a new board, which is 198 ATX. We'll have a few uh, good improvements, uh, which I'm going to talk about uh, later. So, what is Amicube? Basically, Amicube is my attempt to create AGA Amiga that's uh, in the ATX form factor. And um, has a few little differences compared to Mini Amiga. But, as you can see, you know, if you look at the layout, there is a DNA of Minig uh, kind of embedded in this board. Uh, there are certain similarities, but there are definitely certainly big differences between these two boards. This is not a replacement for Minig. Minig is still awesome. It has its own um, special use, um, but uh, in many ways, Amicube is more advanced board and um, has some uh, special features. So what we have here, as you can see, if we focus on, on Amicube, it's a mini ITX form factor again, the same as uh, Minig. It has the uh, full support for um, ATX power supply. Um, then there is SD card, of course, just like Minig has one. Uh, then USB for programming the ARM subsystem. Coincidentally, uh, this board has exactly the same chip uh, as a system uh, MCU controller as a, as a Mimic. It just, uh, coincidentally, the orientation is slightly different, but it is the same IC. Uh, then, uh, we have something interesting here, which is um, tape pin. Uh, this, is, this can be use theoretically on Amiga if needed, uh, if the core can support this, perhaps in the future, but uh, this can be used with different cores because this this board, although I designed this to be prim primarily Amiga, AGA Amiga, because this is Alter Alter Cyclone 3, this board can support 50 different systems from Sinclair, Commodore, PET, Commodore 64, Atari ST, uh, all the way to some uh, low-end PCs and uh, Neo Geo as well. So uh, this one, uh, I've tested the tape in with the Sinclair, so you can uh, ZX Spectrum, so you can actually load the games from the tape, from your original tapes, which is awesome. Then uh, this board has a real-time clock. This battery is for the real-time clock. The chip is here, and then there is a little flash that has the firmware necessary for Amiga and Atari to understand all this. Then uh, this is audio out. There is also a header for audio out here. So if you have a uh, ATX case, you can just uh, have a cable and uh, audio, audio jack here instead of on the side. Then USB. This is comparing to Minimic, uh, which was, uh, if you look at the Minimic, old school PS2 and um, for keyboard and mouse uh, and uh, old school joysticks. This board has uh, actually real USB ports. This can support keyboard, mouse and joysticks as well. Although old school uh, nine pin uh, joystick ports are still here and your old Amiga joystick will work just fine. Uh, looking at the ports, since I'm already here, uh, has a VGA, because after all it is a retro computer. Um, there is certain benefits for having a VGA, and there's pros and cons, of course. Uh, 
what's not ideal is that many PC, many um, modern TVs nowadays have uh, HDMI, but there is a, a um, cable you can use or upscaler you can use and connect this uh, still to a, a new TV with it. And then, as I mentioned, uh, the joystick ports and uh, MIDI, MIDI as well, which is pretty cool. I tested this with Amiga, it works beautifully. Uh, it, as far as I know, it will work just fine on Atari, Cubase, all that stuff. I haven't had a chance to test that yet. Someone will, hopefully, and let me know, but uh, there is zero reason in my mind not to work with all of the other cores, because it's all the same connection. Um, Moving forward, so I already described the ports. Uh, this is kind of cool thing. This is a header for the Wi-Fi. So Omnicube has a Wi-Fi. Basically, you can uh, have 30, what is it, 3860 or something like that, uh, connection to the serial port, and um, just connect to the internet and go to the BBS or maybe serve the internet. It's not super fast. It's limited with a like serial port connection, uh, but uh, it's 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 awesome. I already went to Synchronet and I was you know opening the FTP sites and stuff like that. It works beautiful. Uh, here, there's a couple of uh, jumpers. Basically, you can choose if you want to use Wi-Fi, MIDI, or tape uh, tape input. Uh, the reason is this FPGA has a limited number of pins, so these two uh, pins are, are shared between Wi-Fi, MIDI, and uh, tape in. So here you can, there's a couple of NPN transistors, kind of demultiplexer to to make sure you don't have any sort of collisions between these three little subsystems. So you can choose whatever you like, and because these are headers, you can set up a small, um, let's say, a switch. Uh, on the ATX board, so you can just flip whatever you like to use. Uh, moving forward, what else? It's the voltage regulation, pretty much the same as with Minimic. You can compare and see it's the same thing. Uh, and since I'm talking now about Wi Fi, uh, this new board that I mentioned for the Minimic that's coming, uh, 198, so the next revision, will have this header as well here. Pretty much on the same place, and I figure out how to do the um, integration with Minimic and make sure that yeah, that it works. And it does work. I'm going to submit a video also on the Minimic.ca website, where you can see uh, the board is a little bit bunched with wires all over the place, but um, works just fine. So the new new board will have the header for Wi-Fi as well. Uh, moving forward, what else is here to to say? Uh, buttons, there is ATX, power on, off, reset, there are two progr programmable buttons, one is usually not used, the other one is used for the menu system, on-screen menu system, same as Minimic. Then there is a header for all these things, so you can uh, use these buttons from your case, uh, on your case, using these uh, headers. Then there is also a reset, reset header for the reset uh, button. Um, and most of these features, like the audio and the tape in, so they have the headers on the board as well. So you can, you know, just um, take your take little cables um, to the to the case. And uh, yeah, one thing actually that I didn't mention: this audio here, it's audio out, standard uh, audio jack, uh, three point five millimeters, but. Uh, or this this thing also has um, a composite here. So if you have uh, that cable uh, with the composite out uh, and the uh, audio left and right, it will work. However, don't expect uh, any core, any program to work just fine because you need a special core that actually uh, is uh, waiting for the composite. So far, I was able to test the Tati ST core and it works fine on the composite screen. I think some Sinclair uh, cores will work. Um, I haven't had a chance to test, but uh, I mean, feature is there, so whoever wants to use it, it's uh, why not. Uh, and then, finally, this is the the core of the system, uh, the the brain. It's uh, another FPGA. It's a Cyclone Three. 
and because um, this chip is used in the MIST platform, all the MIST cores will work just fine, uh, as far as I can tell uh, after testing. Not, I, well, to be honest, I haven't had a chance to test all the cores, but there's not really a good reason not to, because I made sure that it's that backwards compatibility is still there. And uh, yeah, that's uh, even that uh, Amiga Amiga core is uh, compatible with MIST as well, and it can um, it can do RTG, uh, AGA full AGA support. CPU is quite fast. It's a zero twenty uh, CPU, uh, sixty eight oh twenty, but uh, runs something between O thirty and O forty, uh, closer to O forty performance. So. This board can support the entire Amiga collection of classic games and programs in hardware in this FPGA with RTG, beautiful RTG, with MIDI, with Wi Fi. It's just a beautiful thing. So, this is what this board is. What it's not, unfortunately, it's not mini MIG. And uh, for many people, that doesn't really matter. Um, because you, know, you just want to recreate your experience in, in, in hardware, in FPGA. And for this thing, Amicube is great. It's also worth saying that the, uh, the chip here, uh, RAM chip is 64 max, uh, also addressable by Amiga. So you'll have a lot, lot of RAM to play with. Uh, by comparison, what Mimic does uh, as an as a extra, something special, that's a CPU slot. So because of this feature, you can add the PyStorm uh, and other accelerator boards to Minimig, and you can enjoy that. Um, sometime in the future, there will be boards like this with a CPU slot as well. But for many people, that doesn't really matter because this what uh, it's done here in hardware. It's already super fast and faster than you probably ever needed with a classic um, classic collection of the. The Amiga games and programs uh, that this is, I mean, ultimate thing, um, and it's uh, streamlined, not a lot of parts, uh, super reliable, super stable, easy to use, uh, and also you can enjoy things like Mega Drive games, you know, Nintendo, uh, Super Nintendo, things like that. It, it kind of has everything under the same roof, uh, which is a beautiful thing. And uh, and being first of all Amiga kind of centric. Uh, makes it for me even more interesting. This is something I, I always wanted to have. That's why I created this board. So hopefully that describes uh, what this is. Um, right now, this is the final version. I have I had three prototypes. This is the last one, and it's as far as I can tell, it's working beautifully. I tested this board for weeks, running, um, abusing the SSD. Resetting this, uh, you know, being quite violent with uh, powering on and off, uh, whatever I can think of, and uh, it's behaving so far so good. So I'm going to make uh, ten of these boards first for the uh, early uh, customers who I would like to have this. And uh, right now I'm I'm just um, preparing for it, setting up a pick and place machine, uh, making sure that uh, build of material is uh, complete uh, and things like that. So pretty soon, hopefully within a week, I'll have this uh, on minimic.ca and uh, from that point on, I'll make sure that uh, stock is always um, existing. It's, uh, I'm trying not to be out of stock again, so I'll, I'll do a little bit more on the logistics in the future. So there you go, uh, first time in Cube. Thanks uh, for watching.